Yes, that's right, Patrick. Her Majesty is expected to arrive uh, at RAF Northolt via a uh, C-17 aircraft uh, a little bit later on this evening, accompanied by her daughter, the Princess Royal, and her husband, Vice Admiral Sir Tim Lawrence. And then Her Majesty will travel in a state hearse from RAF Northolt down the A40. And if those of you who want to watch um, Her Majesty's coffin travel into the route of central London, we do have the exact route for you. So I'm just going to read out uh, where the hearse will be driving a little bit later on this evening. So it goes from the A40 to Eastbourne Terrace to Lancaster Gate, Bayswater Road, Marble Arch, Park Lane, Hyde Park Corner, Constitution Hill and the centre gate of Buckingham Palace, which is where His Majesty the King and Queen Consorts will meet uh, the hearse alongside the Prince and Princess of Wales, where uh, the coffin will be uh, placed overnight. Now, Mark, you were speaking earlier about the significance of the fact Her Majesty's coffin is going to be uh, taken to London from Scotland in a C-17 aircraft. Yes, we, I think we all remember, of course, the C-17 Globemaster transport aircraft uh, of the RAF that were used uh, so regularly, sadly, in the Afghanistan war, uh, almost on a daily basis, arriving uh, back to the UK and then processing these uh, coffins through the town of Wooten Bassett, which later became Royal Wooten Bassett. So these aircraft have carried many of Her Majesty's own troops back home to the UK. So I think very fitting and very poignant, Cameron, that they'll be used on this occasion. Uh, and in terms of what we'll see in the next couple of days uh, with the procession, the solemn procession from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Hall, I gather you've got some news just through now. Yes, I do say. So. I've just in the last couple of minutes actually received a statement from the press secretary of the Duke of Sussex. That is Prince Harry. And it reads, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, will wear a mourning suit throughout events honouring his grandmother. His decade of military service is not determined by the uniform he wears, and we respectfully ask that focus remains on the life and legacy of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Now, I think that statement is very significant, Mark, because uh, Prince Andrew, his uncle, the Duke of York, has been permitted to wear his military uniform at the vigil of the princes uh, at Westminster Hall uh, over the next four days or so when Her Majesty the Queen begins to lie in state. Both the Duke of Sussex and the Duke of York are no longer working members of the royal family and, and the line and the rule had been from Buckingham Palace that only working members of the royal family would be allowed to wear uniforms. So some, certainly online, are starting to accuse uh, the establishments, as it were, of double standards between the Duke of York and the Duke of Sussex. Yeah, I mean, there has been some commentary about that and people suggesting that it's very unfair that two men who saw active service, who put their lives on the line for the country, should not be allowed to wear their uniforms. But you've just explained it beautifully there. And I think that statement uh, from the Duke of Sussex is uh, his uh, effort to try to get people back on track to realise what is important here, which is uh, the tributes that are being paid to the late monarch uh, as we progress in the days ahead towards that state funeral on the 19th of September. And tomorrow it's going to be, I think, incredibly poignant, Cameron, isn't it, when we see in the afternoon the coffin carrying the body of the late monarch uh, on top of gun carriage coming out here processing up to Westminster Hall and behind the members of the royal family. Exactly, yes. So uh, Her Majesty's coffin will be taken on a gun carriage down the mall here where the crowds can view it uh, and members of the royal family will be either walking or in cars uh, behind the coffin and the gun carriage as we understand it. They were rehearsing very early this morning, weren't they, Mark, that uh, ceremonial procession involving uh, many military personnel and Her Majesty's uh, coffin will be then be taken into Westminster Hall a tradition uh, which has gone on for a very, very long time before it, uh, she begins to lie in state for four days from 5pm uh, tomorrow, we, we believe. So, um, yeah, it's uh, going to be a... a
interesting time for the people yeah, of Britain yeah. to personally pay their respects to the monarch. I remember in 2002, actually, uh, when the Queen Mother's body lay in state there at Westminster Hall. I was there uh, working for a, a previous news organisation at that time there on duty uh, as hundreds of the 200,000 people filed past the body of the Queen Mother on, on that occasion and many, many more people are expected uh, to file past the body of Her Majesty the Queen. Uh, we are told, Cameron, that the queues are going to go all the way back potentially to Bermondsey in South East London. It's going to be a very, very long queue, but I think that just shows how much respect the people of Britain had for Her Majesty the Queen.